look at that tan line. That thing is sharp. Anyway, back to basics today, except in the new way. Special day today. This is one of the most requested videos from the last underwater fishing video that I did last time. Today we got two rods. This is the original M rod, which is such superior quality than this generic little one. But I'm starting the little one off with a jig. I've got the legit M rod with a herring that I caught from San Francisco Bay the other day. But the goal today is to go for big fish with live bait. So I'm hoping to catch a live kelp greenling with this jig and then I could throw it on this trap rig with the sliding snell knot and a treble on the bottom. But first I'm going to kind of troll around this big herring for a lingcod and I think chances are better than ever we can catch a 20 pounder. Don't want to get my hopes up too high but we're going after big fish. David Rapp is out with me today. He's in the water already swimming out to the point. It's time I get in there too. Let's do this, y'all. Underwater fishing, part two, big fish. Now, having done this a few times, I've come to the conclusion that I won't be doing this unless the water is super clear. It's just not as fun because you can't see what's going on. But I decided to give it a shot today because honestly, sometimes it is hard to tell how clear the water is until you get in. And today it's about 15 foot visibility. And down here by these rocks, it's about 20 feet deep. Now I'm just jigging up the herring and uh, trying to target around the boulders. And I've got a fish on right now. I could barely see the shiny herring spinning around, but I did see a black silhouette come out from under the rocks and I felt the rod start pulling. And then I knew I had a fish and it was taking drag. As you can see, we got ourselves a really nice lingcod and that didn't take long at all. One thing I also found out is how much your arm, your forearm will cramp when you're doing this, especially if you have a big fish. It's tough. Hey, we got one. A really nice one. Look at that. This is like a 27, 8, 28, maybe even 30 incher. Beautiful. On the herring. Couldn't really see it. It's a little bit murky, but I, I saw the herring, bright silver thing go black. And this thing dragged me around for a little bit. Probably full of eggs. I feel his belly is full or her belly is full. So we're gonna get her we're gonna get her back in the water. Now I was out there more that day for the experience of just going underwater, so I didn't want to keep any fish. Uh, after I released this fish, I pretty much realized that I wouldn't be going back in the water. So I drove up the coast, and by the time I got to my spot it was night already, so I tucked in for the night and went to sleep. You can see this lingcod just swim right down into a hole ever so sweetly. Yo, it was so cold last night I had to put my pants on and my sweater again because normally I like to camp out here, camp out here comfortably, you know. But now I'm warming up. I got the car on. It's heating up. Got the garbage bag on the window. My blanket over the front so I could lay down incognito. But I got the underwater fishing rod. I got a bucket full of crab snares, I got a cooler full of herring, and we're going to swim around in the river. Ah, I just gave it away. Well, the water should be crystal clear, and I'm hoping that in that brackish water, there's going to be some Dungeness crab. We're going to find out soon, so join me on this adventure. It's bright and early, and I'm excited to go. Let's do this, y'all. Dang, I was about to go into the river, but right when I got down there, it said no pull crab snares allowed. So I've got to switch up the plan. I'm going to catch a couple fish really quick. I'm not giving up on that crabbing idea, but these fish shouldn't take long to catch at all. So I'm going to catch two black and yellows right now real fast. And the only way that I know I'm going to do that is because I went underwater fishing in this area and I know exactly how the black and yellows like to bite. So I'm starting out with a 20 gram jiggy jig. It has the tassels, the sparkly tassels, and that's what they're gonna bite. And the thing about catching these fish, if you're targeting them, you don't need to retrieve it all the way. All you gotta do is cast out and retrieve it about 10 feet 
give the attention of the fish and let it sit on the bottom. Chances are you're going to have a fish on on one of those times you lift it up. I don't think this is going to take more than 10 minutes to get one, but I'm going to try to get two today. My setup is a little light today. It's a size 3000 Shimano Stratic with only 30 pound braid. So if I were to catch a big lingcod or a cabazon, I don't think I would be able to pull it up from this cliff. My plan originally was to catch some crab and then come out here catch some fish, some light fish, but I'm going to start with the fish first. There's a fish, fish on. That didn't take too long. This feels actually like a decent fish. Oh, it's a kelp greenling. Kelp greenling. Not exactly what I wanted, but I mean, let's keep her kelp greenling. It's a nice one. It's actually a really nice one. That's got to be good 15 inches at least. They need to be um, they need to be 12 to keep. But that's a good one. Look at that thing. So I'll dispatch him, bleed him, put him in my bag, and we're gonna have that for lunch, for, well, actually for breakfast. So there we go, first fish. And that's bigger than I was expecting, so maybe I'll just keep this. But you know, it's only been five minutes, so I still wanna fish some more. Bonk him right on the head. One more time. All right, he's knocked out. You know, he's knocked out, but what happens when a fighter gets knocked out? comes back to life right so best way to make sure that he's not gonna come back to life is just brain him stab him in the brain now he's dead for sure gosh this is a nice cup greenling probably one of the nicest that I've ever caught this is probably one of the bigger ones ever so I'm gonna cut on its tail because it's gonna be facing it's gonna be at this angle for a while it's gonna cut his tail and then I'm gonna break his spine See that? And the blood just starts coming out right there. So this is how to really thoroughly bleed a fish. You can cut it in its gills, and then if you got it, if you can hang it, if you're able to hang it, cut its tail right there on the end, and all the extra blood will drain out. Man, now the rest is just for fun, because I think that's probably the only one I'm going to keep. Man, beautiful fish. So you already know, that was on The Fisherman's Life. This was the 20 gram Jiggy Jig. But the thing with these jigs and probably even swim baits, you don't have to do that constant retrieve all the way through. If you're confident enough that it won't get snagged and there's not these huge boulders, you can jig it, jig it a few times, get the attention of the fish. The fish will come around and just investigate. Give it a couple jigs and let it sit again. They'll investigate some more. If, they were, if they're hungry, they'll go down and slurp that hook up because it's got that tassel. There's another YouTuber who showed me this idea, actually using these jigs, my jiggy jigs. So what he did was he threaded on a little grub onto the hook and that gave it even extra action. So see that? Little grub with the jig. Give it a little extra action. Let's see if this helps. See if we can catch a fish like this while that fish bleeds out right there. I bet we'll catch another one and it won't take long. So if you can see the tip of my rod, I'm giving it a couple jigs and that's going to get the attention of the fish. After I give it a couple jigs, I just let it sit there for two or three seconds. And in those two or three seconds, that's when the fish has, a time, has time to come by and slurp up that hook. And if I think I feel a bite, I'll lift it a little bit and if there's any weight there, then I'll set the hook. That was a nice one. Oh man, gosh, that look might be a ling cod. Totally fighting a little bit different. Feels like a ling though, honestly. This is with the grub. You know, I put that grub on here. What is this thing? Where is it? Where is it? Ooh. This one's a little bit more heavy. I'm gonna have to go down here and get it down here by these rocks. Hopefully I don't rub on anything. Gotta be careful, man. Extra careful. There we go. All right, what do we got here? Oh, he just ran into a hole. Let's see if I can get him out. I think I can. I can. Oh, 
Oh, there he is. Got him. Oh, cab is on. Just gotta make sure I don't rub on the rocks here. I knew it was a little bit bigger. All right, look at that. So this is a new technique you can use to fish with the jig. This one here, you know, same jig. Only difference is put the grub on it. So Prince, cook it up. That's the YouTube channel that told me about this. Hell yeah, man. That's probably, that is a keeper. That's 15 inches for sure. So two fish real fast. I'm going to release him from up here on the cliff. See you later, buddy. You know, two fish in about 10 minutes with this grub. I like this little grub. I like that grub. Prince, thank you, dude. That's a great little tip. So adding a grub to the front hook on the jiggy jig. And I like to keep the hook on top because if it's on the, in the back, if that hook gets snagged, it's, it's snagged. It's harder to get it off. But if the hook is in the front, you can wiggle it off and the weight of the jig will bounce it off itself. But you know, caught two fish, kept one, released the other one cleanly. I want to catch another one. I just want to catch another one. It hasn't even been that long at all. Let's catch one more. There he is again. All right. Oh man, that's a good one again. What is this, dude? What is this? Is this my black and yellow that I was originally targeting? Let's see what it is. Oh, it's fighting though. It's got some head shakes on him. Got some head shakes on him. Oh, what is it? What is it? What is it? Oh, it looks like another cabazon. Yep, another cabazon. Ah, don't rub on the rocks. Let's get him up here for a safe release. Here he comes. There he is. Dude, right on the lip too. Heck yeah. Oh man, love it, man. From shore, nothing gets better than catching these fish from shore like that. Even though that's probably about 12 and a half, 13 inches. Not a keeper. Still fun, just jigging it off the bottom, man. I took the grub off and I was just straight using the tassel. Letting him go. Three fish, about half an hour. I think I got my fishing fix in. Now I'm getting hungry for some breakfast. We're gonna go cook up something, and then go check on the water again, see if we can do something with the crab. See you later, buddy. Swims right down to a hole, the water is so clear. Ah, I love it, love it. Just look at this kelp greenling. This thing has been sitting here for a while. It's all bled out. This thing is massive for a kelp greenling. Now we're gonna bring it back to the car. I've got some ice in the car, in the cooler, and I don't want it to be sitting in its own guts while we prep the food. So I'm gonna uh, gut it, and then we'll bring it back to the car. Around the butt. Just like a tuna, right? If you were gonna fillet a tuna or get the guts out of a tuna, you would cut around its butt and pretty much do the same thing that I'm doing here. All right, so a trick to get everything out, including the gills, cut around the gills near the bottom, actually near the, near the head, you know, the area, and there's a bunch of connective tissue. Just cut around the connective tissue. That's holding the gills in place. On the other side, we'll do the same. Just cut that connective tissue off. Another piece right there. Now we're pretty much clear. Just cut this last section of the gill off and right underneath, right along the spine. Now as long as all that stuff is off, then you can just pull the whole thing out and it'll all come out in one nice chunk. And I don't want to look at what he's been eating. We'll just keep that to the side. But there we go. We got a beautiful, clean kelp greenling. Toss out the guts. Somebody will like that. Some crab will like that. Ah, uh, these baby wipes, not only good for wiping a baby's butt, but also great for wiping your own hands. Well, and your own butt too. 
Well, it doesn't look like this underwater crabbing thing is going to happen today, unfortunately. And that's because the only other river that I could do this at, there's too much boat traffic. And if there's too much boat traffic, I don't want to be in that channel swimming out there, especially with my float line, all these boats running by. That's a good way to get killed if you want to die. And I don't want to die. So this is a really nice kelp greenling, still looking nice, beast of a fish. And we're going to do a Korean pancake. So this is the pancake mix. And this is well known in the Korean community as being a staple. This is a good appetizer pancake with some scallions and some seafood. If you look at that example of the pancake, you can see the scallions and see all the seafood. But this is one thing that happens a lot when you're trying to make this. You cook one side well, it's nice and crispy, and then you flip the other side and all the seafood and stuff is exposed and it doesn't cook as well. Like it could be better. So I'm going to show you how to make it better. One way to make it crispy all around, you got to take out all the moisture, as much moisture as you can. So I'm going to cook the fish down a little bit, take out some of the moisture from the meat, and then we'll throw it into the mix. The scallions themselves, the green onions, they don't have too much moisture, so I'm just going to throw them in as is. First thing we got to start with, let's fillet this fish, take the skin off, and get any bones out, and then start cooking it a little bit. Do you guys see all those black things? Those are, you know, probably exactly what you think. Worms, which is disgusting for some people. I know it is for my wife, so I'm not going to bring this home for her. But you can see there's a lot of parasites. There's two, and that in it alone might make you gag, might make you just convulse in... Oh, gosh, even it's making me gross out oh yuck one two three four five six probably seven probably another one right in here see when you see a, a dark spot like that chances are there's a parasite in it gross right totally disgusting and probably another one back here yes there is absolutely disgusting but we're still going to eat it because those parasites, even though they look disgusting, they won't do you any harm, especially if you cook them. If you really, really don't like parasites, I'll show you another way to make sure your fish is clear of them. Now, when you don't have a long knife, you could just do it in short little cuts. That way you can get all the meat off the skin. Hard part is right through those pin bones. But just work at it nice and slow and you'll get it all off. Take a look at this fish. This is the other way that you can tell if there's any parasites and you're really grossed out by them. Sun is shining right there. Hold your fish up to it. See any dark spots? Most likely there's a parasite in there. I got those out already so we're good to go. We just need to cook it thoroughly. All right, how does that fish look now? It looks pretty nice and clean, right? No more little black spots. We are good to go. That looks good. If I never told you that this thing had parasites, you wouldn't think twice. I'm going to be cooking this pancake on this cast iron pan over here. Cast iron is notoriously known for having things stick to it, but best way to get things not to stick to it is heat up the pan really well first, then put some oil on it, and then put the fish in it. Don't move the fish until it's ready to move. And you create, basically have a non-stick pan that doesn't have that toxic Teflon coating. So we're just gonna heat this up for a second. I'm gonna cook the fish, get all the moisture out, get the mix of the pancake ready, and we're good to go. All right, that's already hot. Now I'll add a little bit of oil. 
side. That's hot. And I'll do a little garlic salt on the fish, both sides. Not too much. And I'll just cut it in half so it fits in. Actually, it'll fit perfectly just like this. Now we won't move it for a little while, just getting all the water out, okay? Now as my fish fries on the floor, I'm just gonna get this batter made up and I'm just gonna use one egg. And this is the mix for the pancake, so I'm gonna add just enough for one pancake. Pancakes in the morning, not American style though. And I also have some of this this like tempura frying mix. I'm gonna add a little bit of this to it. And that's just gonna make it be extra crispy. And of course we'll add some water and that's what we're gonna make it the consistency we want. I think the fish is ready to flip pretty much. Looks good, looks good, it's getting there. Now is when all that moisture is gonna get out. So I'm just gonna mix this up. So there's the consistency, pretty runny, but that's pretty much what we want. All right, fish is done. I'm gonna cut up some green onion. That's good. Yeah. yeah, I like it. I like green onion, we'll do a lot. Just make one pancake so we got the green onion, just mixing it into our batter. We can take our fish. Put it on the side. Perfect. Look at that fish, how it just breaks apart. So flaky, like that is great on its own. That's good. And we got all the blood out, all the blood. Sometimes the blood can add a little fishy flavor or just make it spoil a little faster. But we got all the blood out, completely clean, just a pure source of protein pancake time all right let's do that again heat up the pan put some oil in just enough to cover the pan the more oil you use the more crispy it will be but don't want to use too much oil right all right that's hot enough I'm gonna dump this whole thing in here all right That'll start cooking quick. And while it cooks and gets hard, I can dump the fish in. As long as the batter is still wet, it's gonna hold this fish just fine. I hope I can demonstrate this because the important thing when you're doing the pancake like this, in order to get that pancake batter on both sides so all the meat and stuff isn't exposed, you gotta flip it while the pancake batter is still wet, which is, can be hard, but I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try. So what I'm looking for here is for one side of the pancake to be kind of hard and ready to flip, the top side should still have a little wet batter. And when I think it's to that point, then I'll go ahead and flip it. Let's give it a good flip. Carefully, uh, yeah. All right, now we've turned down the heat. Now we just need that dipping sauce, but this is gonna be good. This is a big breakfast right here. Half a cup greenling, scallions in the pancake. Let's go. Oh, see, look at that. Because the mix was still a little wet, it was able to cover all the fish and all the green onions. Just let this go for another Another minute or two and it's pretty much done. All right, I think it's done. We're gonna turn off the heat and just let it cool in the pan. And there we are, looking pretty dang good. Just gonna let it cool in here. Heck yeah. Ah, the Chick-fil-A sauce comes in clutch. Dude, my mouth's watering. Mmm. It's good, it's a little more fluffy than what I was thinking. Still good though.
good good quick breakfast they'll fill you up only use half that cup greenling man you know coming out here like this really reminds me of when i took that trip to washington and i still got to get up to washington it's just the weather is horrible right now and things just kept getting in the way earlier in the year but i will make a trip up there and i do want to make another road trip it's just driving for the night your car gets a little messy and disorganized and then you wake up in the morning organize everything again it's nice to have a place a traveling place to stay that's well kept you're super focused making videos super focused fishing keeping everything clean just feels good it's just yeah i don't know feels good I'm, i really want to do that again if i did that this would just be day one you know then we go on a trip and who knows where we'd be next colorado mountains who knows got some big news coming up so next video i think it's going to be uh it's going to be one that you might find interesting for better or worse 